And we welcome you to Garces Memorial High School tonight. Tonight, Garces taking on the Stockdale Mustangs coming into the game at 4-4. Four and four. Garces coming in at 5-1, and 2-1 and one in league play. Or excuse me, 5-3 and three overall and 2-1 and one in league play. I am Matt Alvarez, joined alongside with Coach Ty Thompson, defensive coordinator at the Bakersfield College. Ty, it's your first broadcast. Welcome. I'm sure this will be like uh, riding a bike for you. Oh, definitely, Matt. Yeah, it's good to be here. It's good to be uh, out watching some football, some local talent on uh, Friday night. And it's going to be an interesting game to see what happens between the, both the Mustangs and the uh, Garces Rams. Beautiful night, too. The weather Usually on the east side up here, like right off of Panorama and Columbus and Union, this area, usually gets pretty windy. I might have to knock on wood because as a kicker, you know how much I hate wind. You know how much I hate anything other than perfectly calm weather. Oh, yeah. But uh, right now it seems a little hazy, but the wind is calm. The American flag down on the north side or on the south side of the field is perfectly still. So hopefully it stays like that this whole game. Looks like Stockdale has won the toss. They've elected to defer, which means that Garces will receive this first half kickoff. Garces is captains out there. Number eight, Gabriel Romo. Number 11, Jaden Hollis. Number 53, Nathan Garcia. And number 66, Noel Alvarez. I only got to see two of the Stockdale captains coming out. Number 75, William Tennyson. Number 52, Joseph Gonzalez. And their numbers are, the rest of them are being blocked by the Garces captains. Don't know what all the discussion is down there. Usually when a team defers, it's a pretty obvious choice for the non-deferring team to receive unless you want to kick off twice, which we have seen that at a BC game a few years ago. Ty, I don't know if you remember, but we won the toss, we deferred, and the other team elected to kick. So in the second half, they also had to kick. Yes, exactly, and that, yeah. was, a, that was a pretty interesting game. I actually coached in that game, and we got to – uh, possess the ball twice on both opening kickoffs. It was nice. You know, it gives your gives your offense more opportunity to score and move down the field. And, it, of course, it keeps your defense off the field and keeps them rest so they play fast. Absolutely. So Stockdale going to kick off. They're going to be going south to north. And Garces will be receiving the ball going north to south. Got Zamir Hall on the far side at number 25, Ian Jernigan, back to receive the opening kickoff here. Number 14 is Nick Patino. He's a junior for Stockdale. He's going to be the one doing the kicking duties tonight as the referees have a little pregame powwow right in the middle of the big G on the 50-yard line. Senior night here at Garces. Boy, my senior night was, let's see, 16 years ago, Ty. 16 years ago was my senior night, <laughs> and I remember it. I remember my mom and dad were crying. It was the typical senior night uh, that you would expect. Yeah, the emotions are flying around senior night, and I'm sure these kids have a lot, especially the seniors, you know, so hopefully they bring it out on the field here and play hard, play fast, and get get it done. Well, the pregame ceremonies are over. We are ready for the opening kickoff here tonight. Patino puts foot to football, and it's a pooch kick to the near side, taken at the 25-yard line. That's number 23, Nathaniel Wallace. Wallace cuts back. Wallace has some space on the far side, gets a couple of blocks, and he fumbles the football, and Stockdale has it right off the bat. Stockdale with the recovery on the 49-yard line, just shy of midfield. So Stockdale will start off with the football here after a costly mistake by not your usual returner, Wallace. Wow, what a momentum change for Stockdale, huh? They go down, kick the pooch. They probably want to keep it away from... Uh, from Jernigan, so he can't return it. And then, of course, they get the ball out and they recover. It's a big momentum change right there. Let's see how Garces' defense stands up to Stockdale's offense. And we we're talking about it before the game, Ty. Stockdale has not thrown for a touchdown this year through eight games. Yeah, they've been struggling in the past game, to say the least. You know, um, uh, they – I think their preseason schedule was pretty light, and then they've had a tough road these last couple games, and so hopefully they can find a way to get it done here tonight. Well, we got a flag on the play already, and that's more than likely going to be a formation penalty. Never mind. Head referee waving the tissue in the air, indicating no penalty. Jordan Gallegos, the junior, he's the starter for Stockdale. 36 of 70 on the year. He's thrown for 455 yards, but again, no touchdowns and six interceptions. He's more of a mobile quarterback, as you see here. Cuts to the outside, but Stockdale's deep, or correction, Garces' defense all over on the far side. A host of Rams there on the tackle. 
like maybe a gain of one on the play as LeBron Jackson was the initial tackler. How important is it when you get a turnover like that, Ty, to come out and strike? I mean, I would expect Stockdale to, to, to come out with guns blazing here, knowing that they're at midfield. They got a big momentum shift right off the bat. Yeah. And it looks like they're calling a timeout here on the second play of the game. Kind of unorthodox. Yeah, it's huge. You know, you get you get a takeaway there at the 50-yard line, and you want to drive it down and score. Obviously, by record, Garces has the advantage. And um, if you have a chance to get that takeaway and move down the field and score right away, it will really set the precedent uh, for the remainder of the game. And like I said earlier, it gives you a lot of momentum. And momentum is huge in this game. If you can swing momentum in your favor, you have a real chance to push points on the board. Especially against a team with a potent offense like Garces. They've been, scor they've been uh, scoring a lot this year. They've got a great mobile quarterback themselves in Travis Pluggy, the senior. They've got great receiving, Julian Smith, and then Logan Bowers, their Mr. Everything. As we're now out of the timeout, Gallegos puts his man in motion. And the pitch, or the correction, the handoff to Arzabal, who's their leading rusher, and he gets taken down for a three-yard loss there in the backfield. Great job with the uh, defensive penetration there by Garces. Yeah, so they're working a fly sweep uh, concept here. The previous play, they ran fly action to the field, and they ran uh, quarterback counter back, and then now they brought it from the other side and ran fly sweep with the receiver. But the defensive ends are doing a really good job staying home on the perimeter and keeping that ball inside. Trips to the left side. And here's Gallegos with the ball. He's going to throw, and it's caught. A great diving catch out there by Shane Hereford. So there you go. We expected them to keep it on the ground, but at a third and long, you're going to have to go to the air. And they did, and a great catch out there and a beautifully thrown ball by Gallegos. Yeah, what a catch by number three. That was a, that was a heck of a throw and a heck of a catch. Well, when you put trips out there, might not have enough corners to cover them. And here we go, Gallego. I like how they run up to the line real quickly, and they, they want to they get after it pretty quickly as a little wide receiver screen pass out there to the aforementioned Hereford. He catches it. looks like it's going to go for a loss because he fell down on the play. Yeah, so Stockdale just went tempo on that play. So essentially what that does is it gets the defense out of position when you get back on the ball pretty quick. And what they did is that they went with an empty backfield with five wide receivers split. You know, the running back was in a wing position, so was, what that does is spread the defense out a little bit. Loss of one on that play, second and 11. Trips to the right side, ball's on the near hash. Gallego's going to take it himself. Carries it in his left hand. He's tackled by Logan Bowers. Mr. Everything here for Garces keeps the gain to a minimum as Gallegos picks up one, and it's going to be third and 10 right back at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it looks like the quarterback running game is going to be a big emphasis for him tonight. That's the third carry by uh, the Stockdale quarterback. They tried to run counter back again to the boundary, and, um, and Bowers ran it down from the backside, made a nice play. And you're going to see a lot of that tonight, Coach Ty, is that Bowers gets – he's everywhere on this field. It seems every time you look up, he's making a big defensive play, and that's what Garces counts on him for. Yeah, he's a heck of a player. So here's a third and 10. Gallegos puts his man in motion again. It's going to be a sweep to the near side, and it's swallowed up immediately by the Garces defense. That was Leon Smith on the carry, and nothing doing here for Stockdale. After a big third down conversion, that gained him about 30 yards. Looks like they're going to settle for a field goal attempt from Patino. This is going to be a 38-yard attempt. So by no means a gimme, especially at this level. Oh, he booted it. What a great kick by Patino. It is good, and Stockdale takes the early 3-0 lead with 8.20 left to go here in the first. That was pretty close to being blocked there. You know, our, our man Bowers, again, got penetration through the through the A-gap there, and he, he had his hands spread out wide. I think the ball went right in between both his hands. Well, fortunate for Patino, the, the snap was good. The set down was good. The timing looked a little off, but Patino got the ball up in the air, and he did what he needed to do. He put points on the board, and Ty, how important are points in a game like this, you know, against, against a very potent offense like Garces's? 
Well, you said it yourself. You know, Garces has been moving the ball pretty well, especially in their last few games. And you have a quarterback like Travis Pluggy who can move around in the pocket, who can extend plays with his legs. Um, and it gives them the ability to score more points. And so any time you get a chance to put points on the board, especially right out of the gate off of a takeaway, off of a turnover, that's huge for that's huge for a team. And like I said earlier, momentum is huge. If you can get some momentum earlier, you got a chance to stay in this game and push yourself ahead. They kick it deep this time, and it's going to be taken by Wallace again. He's the one who fumbled it just a minute ago, but Wallace gets a block, and he's still on his feet as he crosses the 30-yard line up to about the 33, and now the Garces offense will see the field. So let's see if Garces can put some points on the board of their own. I want to give a welcome to... Diana and Christian to our right. They run the technical aspects, so they're basically the boss here. And also want to give a shout out to our boy Trevor Holm. Hope you get well soon. You and your beautiful wife take care. You guys get well, and we hope to see you soon. And to Trevor, thank you for giving us the opportunity to do this. It's something that we love. We, you know, we get paid to talk about football. Can't, can't be any better than that. Opening pass from Pluggy. It's, he connects with... Number 11, Jaden Hollis here on the near side, and Hollis is going to pick up a first down after a gain of about 13 or 14 yards. So right out of the bat, Pluggy comes out swinging. Yeah, I mean, that's what happens. The corner's playing eight yards off. He's playing soft coverage. So I think Pluggy just saw he had an easy throw out to the right on a quick uh, five-yard hitch and get the ball to your playmakers in space and let them go. And Hollis is for sure a playmaker for this team. Hollis coming into the game. He's got 11 yards average catch. And that one went for about 12. Jernigan on the near side. Jernigan tiptoes the sidelines but gets pushed out around the 40 of Stockdale. So two plays and two big gains here for the Garces offense. Eight minutes left here in the first quarter. 3-0 Stockdale. We're here at Sam Tobias Field on senior night. I'm Matt Alvarez alongside Coach Ty Thompson. And we are here on a beautiful, beautiful late October night. Not a cloud in the sky and not a breeze to be felt. Pluggy with four wide receivers set. Got Zamir Hall. And now there was a motion, motion on the play. And Jernigan hands, takes the ball right up the middle. Hollis, a great block by Hollis who frees up Jernigan, who's going to go into the end zone for the touchdown. Boy, what a block there by Hollis on the near side. You love to see wide receivers blocking downfield, don't you, Ty? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Anytime a wide receiver can block downfield, that's awesome. Usually they're they're catching touchdown passes and moving the ball, but it's uh, it's good to see wide receivers blocking for their running backs downfield. And Jernigan hits pay dirt in three plays. Garces takes it down the field, and they put up six on the board. Seven pending Palmer Banks extra point here from the lefty. Yeah, Jernigan made just a nice cut. You know, they ran inside zone. And he got through, the front side was washed down, and he makes a nice cut. All you have to do is make one guy miss once you get to the second level, and he did that. Snap, hold, and Palmer Banks' boot is up, and it is good by a mile. That actually went over the fence. Someone's got to go get that from the baseball field out there. <laughs> Seven to three, even though the scoreboard says 13, I could promise you that's only worth seven points, and now it says 20 to three, but nonetheless, seven to three. Garces leading here, 751 left to go here in the first quarter. So now Stockdale's gonna have to try to answer that. I mean, that was three plays and big gains on each play. Let's see, they started that last drive at what, like the 31 yard line tie, so that's Takes you three plays to go 69 yards. That's oh, an yeah. average of 33 yards a play. Not bad. Yeah, they moved the ball quick, and it was the it was the running game. Obviously, they opened them up and softened them up, softened them up with the with the pass game with the first and ten throw, and then you know they went run, 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 and got in the end zone right right away. Bank also does the kickoff duties. The soccer player going to Stanford next year. What a school. He boots it, and it's going to come to the near side. It's going to be taken right at the goal line, and because he stepped inside the end zone, it's going to go as a touchback. That was number 31, Brandon Arzabal. So Stockdale's going to have it at the 20-yard line, and they're going to get another shot at it here at their offense. 
they put points up on their first possession, but they also had the fortunate fumble recovery near midfield. So let's see what they do when they have to go 80 yards. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they try to do on this opening drive here, if they're going to go back to the pass game or if they're going to stick to the running game. It looks like they're going to stick with the empty backfield um, and try and run the ball. Here's Gallegos, looks near side, under pressure. Gallegos goes down. Big time sack there. That was number 22, Jonathan Lester. Lester, the sophomore. It looked like he was able to overpower his man on the near side of the line. Just get back there right in Gallegos' face. Wouldn't let him go. Got to love sophomores playing varsity, man. Oh, yeah. They, they love to get after it. Oh, yeah. It's a great way to get your feet wet and, you know, as he, as, at a younger age. And, you know, it gives you more time to develop and play against good competition as you progress through your junior and senior season. Big loss on the play. It was a loss of eight. So Gallegos has trips to the far side. Empty backfield again, puts his man in motion, hands off, and Archibald's going to take it up the right side. He's got room, and he's tackled after about a gain of 10, so a big gain there on another fly sweep. Yeah, so what they're doing is they're 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 actually getting in quads, so they're going four wide receivers to, to the left side here, and then they brought the receiver from the back side. It's an unbalanced line, and they ran the fly sweep, and they got Garces out leveraged. On the, on the fly sweep play, and that's why he was able to get around and get about 10, 10 yards on that run. So it's going to be third and six as opposed to a third and forever like they just had. And again, empty backfield for Gallegos. Looks, turns, far side, caught. Not enough for the first down, though. Great defensive effort out there by the cornerback. Julian Leon was the receiver who caught it, but it's going to be short of the first down. So Stockdale looks like they're going to bring out their punting unit as they are backed up way deep in their own territory. Yeah, it just looked like a drop pass there, Matt. It was an easy throw, easy catch and throw. Garces is playing soft coverage off. He had the first down, just dropped the pass. Oh, it was an incomplete. My bad, I thought he caught it. So it was an incomplete pass, so it'll be fourth and six. And a punt to the near side, obviously trying to keep it away from Julian Smith, but he's going to take it anyway. Smith breaks the tackle and gets pushed out of bounds right inside the 50-yard line. 47-yard line, they'll call it. Garces on the Stockdale half of the turf to start their second offensive possession of the game. So Stockdale's defense was only off the field for a couple minutes. I don't think they're gassed. It only took Garces three plays to get to the end zone, but nonetheless... Yeah, they're definitely not gassed, but they're going to have to put together a plan here to stop both uh, Pluggy and Jernigan in that run game. So far, Pluggy is one for one with a 13-yard reception, and now he's two for two as he finds Julian Smith, who cuts to the inside. Smith running to the near side of the field now. He gets another block by Hollis, and Smith gets all the way down inside the 10-yard line. What a play. Pluggy gets the ball out to Julian Smith on an easy hitch screen. It's a quick catch and throw, and you get your ball to your playmakers in space, and he takes off, cuts across the field, and gets a nice gain. I keep raving about Hollis's blocks out here on the near side. Someone's got to buy that kid lunch. Yeah, he's doing a great job blocking downfield for his guys. Hopefully the quarterback can get him the ball and give him a little bit of love here. First and goal from the nine-yard line here for Garces. They've got four receivers and they've got one in the backfield. Pluggy takes a snap, looks near side, throws, it's caught by Bowers who gets inside the five yard line. And it looks like he's gonna be at about the two or three yard line as it'll make it a much more manageable second and goal here from inside the five. Bowers on the season, doing most of his work on the ground. He's got 490 yards rushing with six touchdowns and, of course, that huge run early in the season where he went 95 yards. Trips to the left side, one wide receiver to the right. Pluggy. Audible's here at the line. And now he takes the ball, looks to the left side. He's going to take it himself. Pluggy has all day, and he walks right into the end zone. Touchdown for Garces. And it's going to be a 13-3 lead pending the extra point. For Pluggy, that's going to be his 12th rushing touchdown of the season. 
Yeah, that's just defensively, that's one thing you can't account for. You can cover every route, but when that quarterback starts going on the move, um, that's one guy you can't account for in the, in the coverage game. And so sometimes you have to designate a specific guy to spy the quarterback, or you just have to bring pressure and trying to keep him contained inside the pocket. Palmer Banks, extra point is good. It's 14 to three here, 535 left in the first. Ty, this game has playoff implications here for Garces and possibly for Stockdale as well. It's you know, we, we got a couple of games going on tonight. The uh, Bullard and Edison game got canceled. Garces right now coming into the game was sitting as the number eight seed in Division One. If they win tonight, they could go up a few positions, and and you know they they could potentially play one of these teams that are highly ranked like Buchanan, Central, San Joaquin Memorial. If they fall tonight, they could potentially fall to Division Two. Obviously, the the talent level from Division One and Division Two varies greatly. Ty, what do you think? What do you think would better suit the Rams here? Well, I think you want to play in the highest possible division. Um, you know, that's that's something everyone is chasing. You know, I, Garces has done well in, in in their conference play, and so I, you know, I I don't I haven't seen a lot of the teams, the other teams in the Division One section play, besides obviously Liberty because they're a local team, and so. You know, I think they would fare well in the Division One league, and it looks like right now they are um, they are an eight seed, so they would potentially play number one Buchanan, which is a tough team out of Fresno. Arzabal with a huge return out to about midfield as he had to break a couple of tackles, but I see a flag down there yeah, on the 20 yard line. Back. And it's gonna be a holding against Stockdale, so it's gonna nullify that big return by Stockdale. Arzabal had to make a play there, and. He definitely did. He broke a few tackles, but a hold was called, so it'll be all for naught for the Stockdale special teams kickoff return unit. I'm sure Coach Justin Varell, former Garces Ram himself, is watching tonight and shaking his head. He hates to see special teams penalties. <laughs> Our special teams coordinator up on the hill. So that's going to bring them back to about the seven yard line to start off this next drive. <laughs> or I'm sorry, the 11 yard line. So here's Gallegos again. By himself in the backfield, he's going to fake it and he's going to take it himself up the middle, gets upended after a gain of about five. So decent little gain there on a first down play. Gallegos took it himself. Gallegos getting his steps in today after every play. I don't know if you noticed, Ty, but he goes all the way over to the far sidelines, goes and talks to the head coach over there, Brett Shelton, and comes back, gives the play to his offense. Oh, yeah. If they're going to continue to run, Gallegos, they're going to have to rethink about maybe putting in some hand signals, some calls or something, so he doesn't get gassed out by the end of the game. Arzabal has the ball, runs into his own player, and it's going to be a short gain, if any, which will bring up a third and about five. Looks like they're going to continue to stay in the quads look, the empty backfield look, work the fly sweep action, and, and keep that concept of running with the quarterback and handing the ball off to the receiver on the fly action. So a quick third down here. Like you said, Ty, they run that tempo offense. They get up to the line. They waste no time, and they get right after it. Trips to the near side, one receiver out to the far side, and Gallegos in the backfield. Looks like Garces is bringing a blitz. They do, and the pass is caught. On the near side by Leon Smith. Oh, no, it's incomplete. The near side line judge is calling it incomplete. So it will be a fourth down here. Yeah, again, another drop pass by Stockdale. You know, it was a quick, quick, quick catch, quick throw, and the, and the player dropped it. They're going to have to capitalize on some of these throws. The, the receivers are getting open. They're getting in position. They're just not catching the ball here. So another punting situation here for Stockdale. Julian Smith deep on the near side. That ball goes straight up into the air. Actually, not a bad punt. And Smith is going to let it bounce and go out of bounds at about the 45-yard line of Stockdale. So, again, Garces with good field position for their next possession here. So Central defeated Clovis North yesterday, 35-14. to mm -hmm. That win moved the Grizzlies up to the number two in the section, below number one Buchanan, and now above number three San Joaquin Memorial. So for Clovis North... The loss has Garces, Clovis North, and Bullard tied at six numbers six through eight in the CalPreps.com computer rankings. 
So that's what they base the playoff seeding system on is what Cal Prep says. And again, thank you for Trevor Horn for compiling these game notes for us. We really appreciate it. Gives us a little bit of time to chat about the potential playoff scenarios here coming up next week. And we'll find out Saturday what the playoff matchups are going to be as Pluggy hands off up the middle. There goes Jernigan. He's got daylight. He <laughs> stiff arms his man, and he is gone. Like a man amongst boys, Jernigan takes it all the way to the house from 45 yards. And Garces is running away with this one early. It's 20 to 3. Yeah, Matt, they're just they're just running the ball. It's a simple inside zone. Um, he's getting through the line and nobody's making a play, nobody's making a tackle, and he's just outrunning the entire defense. Stockdale better get a plan for Mr. Jernigan or he's going to run all night. So Jernigan makes it look easy. Palmer Bank setting up for the extra point here. Snap down, hold good, and Banks' extra point is another beauty as a rash of kids try to catch it. 21 to three with 3.47 left to go. 21 point outburst for Garces, and my goodness, uh, Ty, if Garces hadn't fumbled that opening kickoff, we could be looking at a 28 nothing blowout here already. Oh yeah, definitely. And it's gonna be interesting to see if Stockdale is gonna be able to cross the 50 into Garces' territory. It's the small victories like that, Ty. The small victories like that. <laughs> you know, it'd be nice for Stockdale to make this interesting, to maybe come out of this with uh, at least a decent offensive possession here because their last couple of possessions have been three and out. Yeah, 100%. You know, and and, and they, they they missed some plays. They had, they got in good position. You know, they had the big run on second down. Um, and then they had in their last two third down possessions, uh, both receivers dropped the ball. So, you know, it goes without saying you have to make plays in this game. And on defense, they're going to have to find a way to stop Ian Jernigan. Big boot by Bank goes five yards deep into the end zone, so that'll be a touchback. You know, when back when I was in high school, which was years ago at this point, but we did play Stockdale, and Stockdale had something then that I look across the sideline, I don't see a lot of now, and that's depth. I don't see a lot of players on that Stockdale sideline tie, and that's yeah, I not was, normal. I was uh, I was wondering the same thing when their team came out. I, I kind of thought to myself, where's the rest of their team? You know, it looks like that. Like you said, the depth is not there this year, um, and obviously the execution is not so far tonight. Gallegos, just a junior, came into this game 36 of 70 through the air, but did most of his work on the ground for 455 yards this season as his pass is, the ball's taken away, it looks like. It looks like Garces stripped the football, and it looks like they have possession of it. Let's see what the referees rule here, and it is. It's gonna be a fumble recovery, a takeaway by LeBron Jackson. What a play. Yeah, LeBron Jackson, he wrapped the receiver up and just pulled that ball right out from him and, and tried to take off for, for a defensive touchdown, and he was happened to get tackled by the receiver who caught it. Well, that is what they teach. Usually they'll have somebody else come in and strip the ball, right? You want to have that first guy kind of secure the tackle, but yeah. it looked like LeBron did it all on his own. And so Garces takes over with great field position here on the 20-yard line of Stockdale. Pluggy looks near side, finds Zamir Hall. Zamir Hall has blocking, and Zamir Hall's going to break a tackle, and he's going to go in for a touchdown. And now it is a blowout. It is 27-3 with 324 left here in the first quarter. Too easy, Ty. Oh yeah, well, it's just a simple tailback swing screen. They they swing the tailback out from the backfield. Quarterback got him the ball. The receivers were blocking downfield and he just makes a nice one cut play and gets in the end zone. Now it's 28-3. Well, this Garces crowd loving it. The Stockdale crowd not so much. We are still very, very early in this game as the bobbled snap is played over to Palmer Bank, who's going to try to run it in. He's swinging the ball like a madman, <laughs> and he gets in. Can you believe it? Can you believe that? A two-point conversion by the kicker himself. Yeah, the Stanford soccer commit makes an exceptional play, gets in the end zone. Hopefully uh, David Shaw doesn't see that clip and try and recruit him from the soccer team up in uh, 
Palo Alto next fall. How do you like the ball security there, Ty? <laughs> he's waving the ball around up in the air. If that, you can tell he's a kicker. He's okay? a kicker. He's a kicker. He's a kicker. They do not drill ball security, but, you know, the kid makes a great play. And now he's got to go run out to the 10-yard line and go grab his own block that he kicks off for extra points. <laughs> yeah. Good for him. 29 to 3 is the tally now. 324 left in the first. And Palmer Bank has three extra points and a two point conversion. What a night for him. He's a senior as well. He's got a big boot. They're definitely, uh, hey, I could find a place for him on the football team, I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah, it's such an advantage to have a kicker that can put it back into the back of the end zone consistently on every single kick. And that one looks like it's going to do the same. It is three yards deep. It'll go as a touchback. Stockdale will get another crack at it here. Down big, down by 26 points here in the first. So we got a new playoff format here in the state. It's an eight-team Division I bracket that will get a bye next week, and they'll begin with quarterfinals on November 12th, and the rest of the bracket will be full 16-team fields. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. It's, a, it's definitely a new format this year that's solely based on uh, wins and losses, and so it'll be interesting to see with this win tonight what it does for Garces and, and also Stockdale. Looks like a false start here on Stockdale's. They're going to be moved back even further. Dead ball, false start, says the referee. So it's going to put him back even further. It's going to be first and 15 now for the Mustangs. Now you think about Stockdale, you think about great players like, of course, David Carr. Think about Ben Osai, who went to University of Washington my senior year, 2005. Yeah, Stockdale's had a cycle of good football players come through over the years. It's been a few years since there's been really anyone significant to come out of Stockdale. I know the Burkhart kid is now at Cal Poly. He was a solid player. And then we have a few Stockdale players um, who are good players for us at the Bakersfield College as well. Gallegos able to get out of that jam and he throws it out of bounds able to escape the sack at least but nothing really gained from that play as it's going to be second and 15 as well probably just tired himself out as he's still having to run to the sidelines to get the call Brett Shelton the head coach over at Stockdale he's assisted by Sean McCown a former head coach himself Nate Odell and Andrew Brown Tony Morales Jeff Demolade that rounds out their coaching staff for the Garces Rams, you got Paul Gola, the head coach. You got Adam Levinson, Adam Dawson, and more after this play as it's second and 15. Man in motion, Archibald takes the handoff, and Logan Bauer swallows him up in the backfield and throws him down just for good measure. Big loss on the play, and it's going to be another third and long. Yeah, Garces has made great adjustments to what Stockdale is doing. What they're doing is they're, they're blitzing the backer off the edge away from the fly sweep that they continue to run. Um, and Bowers did a great job coming off the edge and um, tackling the receiver after the quarterback handed the ball off in the backfield. So it's going to be third and forever here for Stockdale as they're way down in their own territory on the six-yard line. Don't have many plays in the playbook designed for something this long, do you, Ty? No, I would say most offense coordinators don't have a play for uh, third and 22. Usually, most of the time, it's going to be some sort of screen or draw, something that the teams least expect. You know, most defenses are going to play soft coverage in a long down situation. And so, something um, to give your punter some breathing room. Right? Yeah, definitely. And so, you know, you want to suck up the, the pass rush and slip a ball behind them and get the running back, get, try and get some of those yards back that you lost on the first two downs. Leon Smith dropped that ball. So, it's going to be fourth and 24 here from the six yard line of Stockdale. Their punter, Adrian Medina. And that ball is almost blocked by Bowers as the ball comes off his foot. It was a shank. Shanky very much. It's going to land at about the 
one yard line is where they're gonna mark it. Yeah, I think Bowers got a piece of that ball. Getting to do it all man is on the punt return team and he gets through and I think he chipped a piece of that ball. Knocked the trajectory of that ball off to the sideline there. Puts Garces in good field position. 23 yard lines where they're gonna officially mark it. So the Rams with another short field to work with. 29 to three the score here. 2.15 left to go in the first quarter and Garces is absolutely rolling on all cylinders. Well, I tell you what, if Stockdale does not put eight people in the box to stop Jernigan, then they need to reconsider their defensive scheme here. Pluggy back to pass, throws near side, caught and taken at about the 12 yard line. The ball came loose it looked like, but nonetheless he was already down and that was Jaden Hollis on the catch on the near side. So they're still throwing the ball through the air, or excuse me, they're still throwing the ball and continuing their air attack here when they've been Pretty successful putting it on the ground as well. Garces, like I said, just rolling on all cylinders. Oh, yeah. They might see something that we don't see. They might see open open lanes where they can get the ball out, and it looks like Stockdale here put seven in the box. And so usually when you count as a quarterback, that usually means, oh, okay, I'm going to throw the ball because we have less numbers out on the perimeter. And that was Pluggy's first incompletion of the night. Oh, wow. For Garces, they've run... Before this play, they run a total of eight plays. Four of them have ended up in touchdowns. Third and two, Garce is facing their first third down here. And they go trips to the far side. Bowers in the backfield with Pluggy. And on the near side, it's Cage Williams. And Pluggy pitches it right before he gets taken down. It's Samir Hall and a flag on the play as Hall goes in. It's going to be a touchdown for now, but... That's going to be pending the penalty flag here, which is usually a holding when it's thrown in this area. What a modern day dive option play. Dive option was huge back in the in the early 90s and 80s, and they, they run it out of a spread look. They bring uh, the receiver back in the backfield, fake it to Bowers, Pluggy pitches it out to Hollis, and he runs in for the touchdown. Unfortunately, it's a holding play there. So it's going to move the ball back, and it's going to be a third and twelve, third and ten. Oh, it's a block in the back. That's what they called. Okay. Uh, nonetheless, going to be a third and ten here. Going to move the ball back to about the twenty-three yard line, right where they started the drive. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they call here. Pluggy's been struggling, struggling throwing the ball this year. Now he's got a true pass down situation. Interesting, interesting to see what he does with it here. Bobbles the snap, and then he finds a wide open man in Zamir Hall just overthrew him. That would have been six on the board for sure if they could have connected there. Nonetheless, Garces is going to send out their field goal unit with Bank a chance to add on to his point total for the night. Could quite potentially be the first Garces Ram to score via an extra point, a two-point conversion, and a field goal. Really? I need Trevor Horn to look that one up. Yeah, yeah, we definitely need those stats. Well, he needs to make this point first. He needs to make this field goal, and he chips it up in the air. Is it going to get there? No, it's not. He didn't get all of that one. I mean, he got under that one like a sand wedge. <laughs> yeah, the ball went straight up in the air on the kick. Probably sli maybe slipped or got underneath it, and it sailed too high. I wouldn't know much about that. You'd probably be more of the professional on the on the kicking game there. You know, it didn't get there, and uh, <laughs> that's, you know, all the, the, that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, you never know what to expect at high school. You know, when you get into the college ranks, you know, you expect your guy to at least make it from uh, 45 in. Yeah, you know, yeah. But at least distance-wise, you know, accuracy is always the uh, great unknown when it comes to kickers at the college level. Big rush coming off the near side, and Gallegos is just going to get swallowed up in the backfield. Yeah, they're just, they're just continuing to bring pressure. You know, they're twisting, and they're bringing four and five. Four on the twist, and they're bringing five. A lot of pressure off the perimeter. Quarterback has to get it out fast, or he's going to be running for his life. It's going to be second and 15, as that was a big loss of five on the play. We're in the last minute of the first quarter here, 29-3, to three, Garces leads. I'm Matt Alvarez next to Ty Thompson. 
Christian and Diane running the technical aspects to our right. Diana, sorry, Diana. And Gallegos swallowed up again. I mean, there, there's just there's nothing going right here for Stockdale's offense. Is Zamir Hall, the penetration on the near side was just too much. It's almost like he wasn't even blocked, Ty. Yeah, no, they're 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 trying the quarterback counter again. The quarterback's overrunning his front side blockers, and um, you know Garces is just they're they're getting off the ball so fast and they're getting in the backfield so fast. You know, what Stockdale might try to do is is get that quarterback to be a little more patient and they can trap stock or trap the Garces defenders upfield and the quarterback can run underneath them and get vertical and get some yards on those quarterback runs. So that's the end of the first quarter. 29 to 3. We'll take a break here on the Garces YouTube channel. 29 to 3. Garces leads big after one. Back here at Sam Tobias Field, Garces Memorial High School. We are on the Garces Memorial Sports Network. And Stockdale facing a third and 21. Now going, oh no, did he just take that in the end zone? He did. I think he did. He yep. did. Gallegos went down in the end zone. Not sure if he was aware of where exactly he was, but that's going to be two more points for Garces. Yeah, again, Stockdale, smart move by their coaching staff. They ran a sprint out pass, which the quarterback sprints outside of the pocket he's going on the move using the Stockdale quarterback strengths to his advantage but again Garces is getting so much penetration on the perimeter with their pressures and twists and they're having a hard time getting the ball out and of course it led to a safety there so Gallegos goes down in the end zone results in a safety and they're gonna have to kick off from the 20 yard line here Jernigan, the deep man, along with Zamir Hall. It looks like Vitino is going to opt to place kick it as opposed to punting it. Got the option. Wow. That's a big one. We got an uh, update here from Liberty. It looks like the BHS drillers are up on Liberty 13-7 to with an extra point pending. That would be a big, big upset. No, oh, yeah. Obviously still early. Yeah, big time win for the drillers there if they can finish that game off. Still early, like you said. So we'll see we'll see what happens and keep you guys updated. Patino. Looks like he's angling to kick it off to the or he's gonna pooch it rather, and it's gonna bounce. Should never let the kickoff bounce. I hate when that happens. And it's taken Andrew anyway Tobias. by Andrew Tobias. Tobias has some room up the right or at the far side and takes it along the right sidelines. He's out at about the 33 yard line. So Garces again gonna have great starting field position here for another offensive drive. Yeah, that's the problem with the pooch kicks, is when you put it up in there, if you don't get it high enough to buy time for your coverage team to get down the field. Then the, what's the point, the, right? Yeah, the return team will get it. And if he finds one lane, he'll get through. And your coverage is so spread out. Initially, once you kick the ball off, there's the your running lanes are going to be wider and bigger there. And that's essentially what happened. Tobias was able to get up the sideline fast. And, again, now Gar has the ball at the 30-yard line, 29-yard line. Pluggy looks, has time, running out of time, now takes it himself, dodges a few tackles, stays on his feet, and then finally gets pounded about three yards past the line of scrimmage. You hate to see your quarterback taking hits, especially in a game like this, but Pluggy, he's the leading rusher on the team. I'm sure he's used to it. Yeah, he's a big, tall, strong kid, and um, 
you know, obviously his the the running aspect of his game is a huge part of their offense, and you know that's unfortunate part is it gives you an advantage, but it also puts you at a disadvantage because it you allow your quarterback to take more shots as he gets more involved in the running game. Pluggy looks near side, throws the ball. He's got his man open, and LeBron Jackson cannot reach it as it is just overthrown. And a third down here for Garces upcoming from the 25-yard line. Well, this stat still stands, Ty. Since the second half of the Liberty game, the Garces defense has not given up an offensive touchdown in now 11 consecutive quarters. The only points that were scored in that span were a kickoff return and a field goal by Bakersfield High School. As wow, incredible. That's they, good. They got good a great defense. Great defense here at Sam Tobias Field. And Jernigan gets swallowed up after a gain of about three or four, so it looks like they might bring out the kicker, Palmer Bank, again. Oh, I mean, at least that's what I'm hoping for, but <laughs> nonetheless. Yeah, why not? You and you're up. Kick it. Guess not. But they decide to go for it, huh? Grr. Oh, well, fourth and three here from the 23-yard line. Maybe they'll try to draw them off sides with a hard count here. Yeah, and it looks like Jernigan's back in the game. So I'd assume it'll probably be a ball given to Jernigan or a design quarterback run with Pluggy. And they go with a hard count. Freeze them. Almost like I know what I'm talking about, right, Ty? There you go, yeah. <laughs> all, yeah. That all that experience on the sidelines, <laughs> listening to every, all the real coaches talk <laughs> about football. They got, yeah, him with, the, got him with the hard count. The freeze count is an offensive weapon that is underutilized. Takes a lot of discipline to not jump. It's something that has to be repetitively practiced over and over again. Pluggy looks far side, throws, and it's just out of the reach of Bowers. How many times on the sidelines have you heard, either in game or practice scenarios, in all of your time playing football, hold your water? Hold oh, your yeah. water. Watch the ball is something that's probably ingrained in the back of a defensive lineman's head. Oh, yeah. You know, till for the – from. The, his first day on the field to his last day on the field and then through the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. Second and 10 here for Garces from the 17 yard line. Pluggy throws, that one's gonna one hop Julian Smith. He's not able to come up with it, so it's gonna be third and 10 now. And it's interesting why they're continuing to throw the ball. Pluggy's throws have been a little off. He's overthrown a few receivers. Um, I don't know if they're trying to get him in rhythm. Um, and try and get their offense going a little bit. But it looks like they should just stick, go back to the run game. They've been pretty successful doing that. Third and 10, trips to the near side. Garces now going south to north as you watch it on the screen. Bowers in motion. Pluggy, hands off. And it's Zamir Hall off to the right side. He's going to walk right into the end zone. And they throw a flag. Right at about the five-yard line, so this one's going to come back. Maybe a hold by that big number 68, Davis May, 6'5", 305-pound junior. And it is going to be a hold. You know, it was the same play they ran earlier uh, on the previous touchdown by Jernigan. Just a simple gap scheme play. They pulled the guard around. So the holding happened, it looked at around the four or five yard line, so it's 10 yards from the spot of the foul. It's gonna make it a third and seven, what the scoreboard has. So Pluggy has missed his last four passes. He's five of 10 for 85 yards, and he started off the game very well. Now let's see what the discussion is here as Coach Gola standing here at the 25 yard line on the near sideline. He wants an explanation as to why the ball got moved back that far. And the referee's explaining him it's 10 yards from the spot of the hold. Mm -hmm. Goal is still not necessarily happy with the explanation. It's great to see your big lineman like that blocking at the past the second level. Oh, yeah, anytime you field. get your big boys downfield, it's a good thing. Bit of a size difference from a standard size safety or cornerback to a uh, pretty big boy and an offensive lineman. Yeah, that's uh, – that's basic physics. You have uh, 
Unstoppable force meets immovable object. It's kind of the opposite of that. You have an unstoppable <laughs> force that meets a very movable object with a lighter, smaller defensive back. Samir Hall with the handoff up the right side. Right around the right hash is going to be about maybe a yard or two short of the first down. Let's see if Garces opts to go for it here on fourth. Oh, they have they marked him about three yards short. Palmer Banks standing here on the 40-yard line right in front of us. Doesn't seem to be moving. It looks like Garces is going to go for it. I mean, why not when you know that you've stopped Stockdale's offense on umpteen consecutive drives? Yeah, I think they're just trying to get their offense in a flow here um, where they just want to get up big and, uh, and cruise the rest of the second half. Pluggy going to take it himself, and Pluggy's going to go into the end zone just about untouched, and Garces. Takes a bigger lead here. It's going to be 37 to three, pending the Palmer Bank extra point. Yeah, that was a design quarterback draw. The previous touchdown they scored was the swing screen, and they ran the same concept. And Pluggy didn't even look at the running back swinging from out of the backfield. He just took one step, paused, saw an opening, and just ran right up the a gap to score. Pluggy also does the holding duties here on the PAT attempt. And Palmer Banks boot to the football this time. Is a lot more sound than his last one. So it's going to be 38 to 3 here with 9.30 left to go in the first half. I want to thank our sponsors tonight on the Garces Memorial Sports Network. Jostin's Sean McNally, the former Renegade and Garces Ram himself. And uh, Miami Hurricane, would you call him a hurricane? Or would you call him a Miami? I, I don't know. What, what do they call Yeah, them? I don't know what they're, what's going on down in Miami. Yeah. I know they're the Hurricanes, and, but their mascot's a duck. And, yeah, and I actually played at, uh, at Bakersfield College with, uh, with Sean, and he's a, he's a good guy. And, and we, had, uh, we actually had uh, Sean, and we had a punter that went to Miami as well. Dalton Botts. Yeah, Taft High School. Oh, yeah. want to thank Tom Ming, Berry Family Dentistry, Belden Blaine Radis, Jasmine Vineyards, Borba who reminds you to drink milk. Houses by Hall, CA Recruits, Chris Hamilton, SCOI, Placer Title Company, Boyd's Pool Service, Sangara Mercedes, the law offices of H.A. Sala, and Pav Solar, who is our title sponsor tonight. Thank you to all of our sponsors who make this production possible here at Garces Memorial Sports Network. Big return here for Stockdale, as it looked like number 11, Leon Smith, gets all the way up to about the 40-yard line. Smith, a junior himself, plays a little bit of wide receiver and defensive back for the Mustangs and picked up a big return. That's probably the biggest play that Stockdale's had in some time. Yeah, Smith is a good player. Um, I've watched him in a couple games this year. It's interesting how, why they haven't tried to get him the ball more. He's probably overall their best athlete out in space, both offensively and defensively. 37-yard line, Gallegos. We'll start Stockdale's next drive. Looks near side, finds his man, but it's just in and out of the hands of Shane Hereford. Hereford had a big catch, a very big catch, on the first Stockdale drive of the game after they recovered the opening fumble that was dropped by Garces, and that led to three points, the only three points that Stockdale scored tonight. Yeah, they haven't seen much life since that big throw and big catch. It's been... Anything but steady here for the Stockdale offense, but they've got a second and 10 to work with here. Again, going with the quad set. Now they're tight. It's going to be Gallegos running to the near side. Gallegos finds some room, and he's going to get pounded at about the 45, 46-yard line. A big hit there by Julian Smith. Yeah, that's the only success they've had all night. They uh, overload one side. They went with the quads look, and they brought the fly sweep action again across. The quarterback faked it and uh, and followed his, his receiver out into the edge, and they really outnumbered the Garces defense on the perimeter there. And they pick up a first down. It's been a while since they've had a first down, but finally Stockdale moving the ball. Yeah, I would, I would continue to, uh, to work those same concepts and continue to move the ball and continue to – run the quarterback because that's really their only answer right now. Quads again, Gallegos by himself. 
Gallegos takes the ball, looks far side, throws the ball up there for no one, and it's going to be almost intercepted and dropped by Julian Smith. Oh, he had it. It yeah, was al right, almost right a great fingertips. Almost a great over the shoulder catch, and now he's getting a little love from Cage Williams over there. It's, he almost he, he knows it himself. You can hear him from up here. He is not happy that he dropped that one. It looks like he had control of the ball and uh you know just didn't look it all the way in you know we're kind of most receivers and defensive back are taught to catch the ball with your eyes look it in and tuck it and uh you know he failed to do that there and resulted in a incomplete pass as opposed to an interception well lucky for gallegos the drive stays alive here second and ten as they run the tight look again gallegos hands off archibald near side archibald cuts it back and doesn't get much maybe a gain of one or two it's a good tackle out there by six, Cage Williams again. Yeah, Garces is doing a good job on the perimeter, setting the edge, you know, forcing the ball back inside, not letting it get outside, outside of their defenders so it can get up the sideline. Third and eight now, big for Stockdale here to keep this drive alive if they can. They need to get some points on the board and they need them in a hurry. Time is running out here. We're at the 7.55 mark here of the second quarter. Uh-oh, the receivers aren't set yet. Gallegos gets it off. Here comes a screen play, and the pass is caught, and it's number five, Aaron Charles. They are going to get the first down. So well-designed play there on a third down. You got Garces wanting to rush, and a, a perfect, a perfect uh, pass right over the middle. It's green. Yeah, Garces brings pressure. They bring five. Um, it was a good call by Stockdale. They dialed it up at third and 12 situation, and they again, they ran a tailback slip screen where they snuck the back out behind the pressure. The quarterback popped it over the top. Running back caught it and got the first down. So finally, Stockdale moving the ball. They haven't been able to move it much all night. And again, the tight formation here. They send their man in motion. And Gallegos is going to take it himself up the far side. Gallegos runs into a host of Garces defenders, but still picks up about four or five. Just a steady diet of two, three-yard gains, maybe a seven or eight-yard gain on a screen, but Gar or, correction, Stockdale moving the ball pretty well here on this drive. It's going to be second and about six here from the 33-yard line of Garces, or the 32-yard line of Garces. Ball's on the far hash, and they're going to continue with that tight formation. Gallegos, Archibald in motion. Archibald gets the ball. He's going to go on the right side, and he is pushed out of bounds after about a two- or three-yard gain. Yeah, they're finding some success here finally in the second quarter with this, uh, with this really it's an unbalanced look. They have four wide receivers that are bunched up to the right, and the wide receiver to the opposite side is off the ball, which puts two of your receivers to the field on the line of scrimmage, making one of them ineligible. That allows you to bring that wide receiver from the backside in motion, and the quarterback's handing them the ball off, giving you extra blockers on the front side there. They stack the line to the near side, the short side of the field, and it's going to be Gallegos trying to take it. It was a third and three. I don't think he got it there, Ty. Yeah, it looks like he's short. Again, they run the same play, except the quarterback keeps it now. And again, Garces is doing a great job setting the edge there on that overloaded bunch look on the perimeter. Then they're forcing that ball. They're stretching that play out, not letting the quarterback or the running back get vertical up the field to get a first. And... It looks like Stockdale is going to go for this fourth down here. Yeah, I kind of have to at this point. Fourth oh, yeah. and about one. It's going to be a long one. Let's see what formation they come out in this time. Not very rushed as they get to the line, and Gallegos is going to go under center for the first time in a while. He's going to take it, and looks like he got enough for the first down. First Good time old quarterback wedge. Yep, first time we've seen him under center. And they do pick up the first down. Big time first down for Stockdale's. They keep their drive alive. This drive's taking up a lot of time, Ty. Yeah. Yeah, which is a good thing. 
to a certain extent because it keeps the Garces offense off the field and Jernigan and Pluggy and all the playmakers they have over there. Gallegos looks like he's favoring maybe a limb there as he runs back onto the field after getting the play call from his coach. First and 10 from the 25. 5.15 left to go here in the first half. 38-3, Garces leads it here on the Garces Memorial Sports Net. Smith in motion. Gallegos hands off to him. Smith with a nice juke over on the far side, and he breaks a tackle again. Like I tell Trevor Horn every week, the yak yards, the yards after contact, so vitally important, especially at this level. And great play by Smith to get up the field and gain eight yards on that first down play. Yeah, they got to continue to. Uh, that's really the first time they've gotten him the ball all night. Again, he's one of their better playmakers. They really need to continue to give him the ball, give them a chance to score some points here before the half. And remember, Garces has not given up an offensive touchdown since the Liberty game. So it's been 11 consecutive quarters and counting that they haven't given one up. Yeah. So they yeah. they got their backs against the wall here, though, at the 17-yard line. Going to be second and two for Stockdale. Smith in motion again. Smith gets the ball. And the backside pressure gets there quickly. And a big tackle on the far side by Jaden Hollis limits the run there by Smith. Actually loses a couple yards on the play. Well, yeah, they got their stop there, making it third, third down situation, and so it really puts Stockdale in a in a in a passing situation because their last few runs have netted him a lot of yards. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do here. Third and four from the 19, trips to the near side, one man out to the far side, and Gallegos by himself at the backfield turns, throws quickly, and it's caught by Smith. Smith is swallowed up there. Great tackle. By Jernigan. I don't think he got any yards, actually. So that was just a quick turn and go, a little hitch, little hitch play. And nothing doing. Yeah, oh, that's wait a minute. Did they call a first down on that? It did not look like he got four yards, but you know, hey, man, we're at an angle here. Yeah, we're we're like sitting at about the up. we're sitting at about the 40, 35 yard line on the near side of the field, so if they did get up the field, then we must have missed it. So uh, looks like they got it. We don't have the luxury of being at the 50-yard line in the nice warm press box. I had to just put my jacket on. Yeah. <laughs> so first and 10, Stockdale keeps the drive alive here on the 15-yard line. Garces with their backs up against the wall, trying not to concede a touchdown to an offense. They haven't done it in a long, long time. Gallegos looks near side, throws, passes caught. Why is he running backwards? And that was Ju that was uh, Julian Leon. Let me see. Yeah, Julian Leon, number four. As soon as he caught it, he started running backwards. Ty. Yeah, Leon. He really he really misses opportunity to get a couple more extra yards. You know, most of the time receivers are taught to catch the ball and get vertical. You know, the worst thing you want to do is run east and west. You know, after you catch the ball, you want to get north and south to get in the end zone and score some points. If I'm not mistaken, Garces, or correction, Stockdale started this drive with eight minutes on the clock in the second quarter. We are down to two minutes and ten seconds left to go in the second. Now it's Leon Smith again, and he's tackled by Hollis. What a great tackle out there on the far side as it was one-on-one. -on -one. Hollis made a great play to make it a third down and long as a couple of yards were lost on that play. Yeah, that's Hollis' second crucial tackle here on this drive. You guys are trying to get, Stockdale's trying to get their playmaker, Leon Smith, the ball on the fly sweep. He's doing a good job getting off the perimeter, beating the first man and, and tackling him in the backfield. Minute 35 left and counting here in the first half. Garces up 38-3. Garces Memorial Sportsnet. I'm Matt Alvarez. Next to me is Ty Thompson. And Stockdale now faced with a third and seven from the 12. Trips to the right. One receiver to the left. Gallegos looks, throws to the left, and that is going to be incomplete as the ball, I don't think it got there. Yeah, a little bit of miscommunication between the receiver and the quarterback. Quarterback threw it at five yards. The receiver ran six. Common occurrence in high school football and both college football as well. And you saw it last night on Thursday Night Football. Big mistake by the Cardinals. You saw A.J. Green, Kyler Murray throw A.J. Green the ball, and he wasn't even looking, and 
the Green Bay Packers player picked it off. What an exciting game that was, oh, right? It was a great game. Fourth and seven now. Stockdale trying to keep this drive alive. This very time-consuming drive. Almost seven minutes of, pl of play clock have elapsed or of game clock have elapsed. Yeah, and you wonder if the Garces defenders are getting pretty tired here before we go into half. Looks like Brett Shelton's going to call a timeout. Get this, Ty. Stats are entered on max preps by the, well, hopefully they're entered by max preps. When I used to work in the media uh, as a, as a full-time job, I had to look up all these stats and make sure, you know, when, whenever we put out press releases and whatnot, and their uh, stats were hopefully entered correctly by the high schools. There are 48 schools in the central section that input their stats on max preps, and 48 schools have a rusher with more than 400 yards. Garces is the only school that has four players wow. with more than 400 yards of rushing. That's Pluggy, Jernigan, Bowers, and Hall, and they've all added to their totals tonight. They're all in the top 71 in the section in rushing yards. Wow. Well, yeah, I mean, we are you know, Pluggy was struggling getting the ball out to his receivers, but who needs a pass game when you have four rushers that have an average over 400 yards here? And remember that Pluggy started off the game 4-4, four, 5-5. Four, five five. You know, he was he was on a heater starting off the game for sure and then missed his next four throws after that. But when, like you said, when you have a steady diet of running backs that can get the job done, not a big deal. Fourth and seven here for Stockdale's. We're out of the timeout. Gallegos looks near side, throws. It is, I don't know if it's caught or not. It was incomplete. It bounced off the hands of one receiver and was almost caught by Julian Leon. It was incomplete. Garces will turn it over, or correction, Stockdale will turn it over on downs, and Garces will get the ball back. Big stop by the Garces defense after a long Stockdale drive. Yeah, Garces is continuing to bring pressure. They brought five again here. Um, you had good coverage on the back end, and so when you bring pressure, the quarterback's forced to get the ball out a little bit faster. Sometimes he panics, um, and you initially the receivers need to get separation fast. Um, so the play doesn't result in the sack. And so essentially what happened there, the quarterback panicked a little bit and he got rid of it and made a bad throw to his open receiver. So first to 10, Garces takes over their own 12-yard line. This is the worst field position they've had in some time now. Trips to the near side. Pluggy has a man in the backfield with him. Looks, turns, far side, caught. Hollis, gain of about six yards, and he gets out of bounds to stop the clock. 16 plays on that last drive by Stockdale. Started at the 37-yard line. And like I like I mentioned, I believe, unless my eyes deceive me, that that drive started with about eight minutes left on the clock. We're down to about a minute and three left on the clock now. Yeah, they took a lot of time out of the drive. And obviously, it, it's unfortunate it didn't end up in any points. But it only leaves the high-powered Garces offense with a minute to move down the field and try and score and put more points on the board. Catch by Zamir Hall out on the near side. Hall breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, gets a block. I Julian Smith and Hall gets thrown down by his face mask, it looked like, and there are the tissues on the turf as two referees saw it. And Hall favoring his leg as he comes off the field. That's never a good sign, but that's going to be 15 yards tacked on to that big reception by Zamir Hall, the 5'8", 180-pound junior. 52 seconds left to go in the half, 15 yards tacked on to the end of that. It's going to be first and 10 for Garces at about the Stockdale 38-yard line. Yeah, and that's a huge penalty. That's a backbreaker right there. It looks like this Stockdale defender got didn't really have a hold of his face, Max, but he got a piece of his helmet by his chin strap, and they're pretty critical now on those penalties. Anytime you get hands on the face, they're going to call that. Pluggy looks, throws near side, caught. And LeBron Jackson with a big stiff arm to number 23, Quez Seward. And Jackson gets enough yards, looks like for another Garces first down, down to the 28 as the clock stops with 43 seconds left. Remember, Ty, Stockdale won the opening kick or uh, opening coin toss. They deferred to the second half, so Stockdale's going to get the ball to open the second half. I think Garces wants to put some points on the board going into the second half. Yeah. Yeah, you. I mean, you always want to leave. You always want to leave the field going into the locker room with a little bit of momentum, um, and you don't want to leave the field going into the locker room with your momentum taken away. And that's exactly what's going to happen if Stockdale lets Garces score right here. This will be 
really the straw that might break the camel's back going into the locker room. Funny thing is, that was a great catch by Logan Bowers, but he landed inside the field of play, and he didn't get the first down, so the clock had to roll. So now a lot of time has come off the clock. We're down to 20 seconds. Pluggy looks near side, throws Bowers again. Bowers breaks here. away, and he is gone. Touchdown, Logan Bowers again, and Pluggy gets a touchdown through the air. Garces running away with this one in the first half. Yeah, it's just a, it's a it's a mismatch on the perimeter there. You got Travis Pluggy, they're playing man coverage, and he's running away from the defender on an out route, and the defender's got inside leverage. Quarterback makes a nice throw, and you know by leverage he's beat, and he outruns him into the end zone. Palmer Bank sets up for another extra point. Snap good, hold down. Banks' extra point is up, and it is no good. He pushed it to the left. 44-3 to here with 15 seconds left in the first half. Pluggy has another touchdown pass, and it looks like, unless uh, we have some crazy stuff happen in the second half, that Garces is going to extend their all-time series lead over Stockdale to 9-4. and four. Last time these two teams played was in November of 2019. Oh, wow. Two years ago, because Garces couldn't play any Kern High School District teams in the spring last year. And the Rams beat Stockdale 27 to 13. Kind of weird, like two years ago, right? Yeah. It's just, it seems yeah, so it's weird. Yeah, it's been a long hiatus of high school football here in Kern County with the, you know, with the true leagues playing. And so it's, it's awesome to be back this fall and back to normal, so to speak. And it's good for the kids and the schools and the programs as well. Absolutely. Oh, Garces has won three of the last four coming into the night, looking to make it four out of the last five as Palmer Bank boots it right down the pipe. It's going to be taken right at the one-yard line by Julian Leon. Leon looking for a block up the far side, gets one, breaks a tackle, and the ball is going to be placed right at about the 27, 28-yard line with nine seconds left here in the first half. Well, you either take a knee, you go into the locker room and game plan, or you just hope for a miracle and take a shot down the field and maybe run your hook and ladder, your lateral play, and try and get points on the board. But I think Stockdale will probably just either run the ball or take a knee and try and regroup yeah. going into the into the locker room here. Gallego's going to be under center. It looks like that's exactly what they're going to do, Coach Thompson. They're going to take a knee here lick their wounds and go to the locker room down 44 to three. That will end the first half for us here on the Garces Memorial Sports Network. And we will rejoin you at halftime for a little recap and then we'll be back for the start of the third quarter. I'm Matt Alvarez, this is Ty Thompson and we will see you at halftime.
Back at Sam Tobias Field, Garces Memorial High School here on the Garces Memorial Sports Network. I'm Matt Alvarez, joined alongside by Coach Ty Thompson, defensive coordinator at Bakersfield College. Got about six and a half minutes left here in halftime. Garces up big, 44 to three, heading into the third quarter. Stockdale's gonna be on the receiving end of the second half kickoff. A Little bit of stats to start off here on the, our halftime recap. Pluggy, 12 of 15, 174 yards and two touchdowns. Pluggy also has two touchdowns via Rush. Jernigan has two touchdowns. He's run four times for 102 yards. Let's, what is that, 25 yards? I'm not a math major, but that seems like yep. a heck of a long way to run for, uh, for a lot, for very limited times touching the ball. Got 102 yards. Uh, receiving wise, Zamir Hall leads the way. He's got four catches for 67 yards and a touchdown. Logan Bowers has three receptions for 24 yards and a touchdown. And Jaden Hollis has caught three passes for 26 yards. I mean, does Garces need to change anything up here in the second half, Ty? No, I think when you put 44 points on the board, um, all offensive points, I really don't think you need to make many adjustments. You know, um, I would probably, they're probably going to put the ball on the ground more, you know, and try and run this clock out and get out of this game. You know, a lot of times when you get up in games like this, um, the players tend to, to relax a little bit more, and usually when you relax, you have, you know, situations that come up, you know, like uh, lack of focus and you miss plays, and, you, and then you have mental mistakes, and then you also uh, can, can lead to some injuries in a game that's really uh, well in control. And, uh, you know, and once you win the game, you want to essentially try and get some of your players that normally don't play on the field, get them experience. Um, and that gives you a little more uh, experience overall as a team going into playoffs or when you go into these bigger games and maybe you do have a potential injury. Now you have some players that do have a little bit of experience and they're better suited to play against a, a more quality opponent. But, yeah, it, it really looks like they, they're not going to change much up. You know, I think Stockdale, you know, they had that one drive where they drove down the field um, and they're being they're really attacking the perimeter of the Garces defense and Garces made good adjustments and was doing a great job on setting that edge and forcing the ball back inside to where all their numbers are. Um, and so I think Stockdale's really got to look to come back to that, you know, running that what we call an unbalanced look, um, you know, having, having that quads look, having four receivers on, on one side, one receiver to the other side, you know, in an unbalanced look, and they're bringing that receiver over on the fly sweep and they're getting him the ball and then they're running the quarterback option runs. You know, one thing they should try and do because they've been heavy running to that quads to potentially run, you know, get back to that quarterback counter game off the back side because Garson is going to favor that side to the quads, which is going to leave them open on the back side. So that's one thing they can look at. Uh, potentially going to in the second half. But, uh, you know, that's really the only offensive success they've had. You know, and then Stockdale's really got to find an answer on defense uh, for, for the run game and Pluggy and, and all the weapons they have. Well, a weapon that's being used against us right now is the speaker system that's right above our heads. So we're going to go to break. If you can still hear us, <laughs> we're going to go to break. And we'll come back. We'll pick it up in the third quarter.
We're back here at Sam Tobias Field, Garces Memorial High School, and we're going to talk some playoff stuff now. At, at game time, Ty, when coming into this game tonight, the rankings were as such in Division One. Buchanan was number one. They were 8-1, and 4-0 oh in the track. Central was number two. San Joaquin Memorial, number three. Clovis, number four. Liberty was number five. Clovis North lost to Central. They were number six. They're going to fall in the rankings. Bullard was number seven, and Garces was number eight in Division One, Garces doesn't seem like the issue is in doubt here tonight, so they'll move up. Clovis North will move down, but the big variable tonight is BHS and Liberty at halftime. Don't want you to switch from our program because we've got a lot more game here, but at halftime, Bakersfield is up on Liberty 20-10. to 10. Yeah. That yeah. has some serious playoff implications there. Yeah, that's going to be a big win for the drillers down there um, if they can beat a quality Liberty team. I watched them play last week against Stockdale, and they were firing on all cylinders, offense, defense, you know, and and, and Brian Nixon over there is a, is a heck of a coach. He's done a good job with that program over the years. Um, you know, but with this win, Garces is going to probably stay where they are. You know, Clovis North is a quality team, losing to Buchanan, who is also a quality team, a big powerhouse uh, out of Clovis, Fresno. Um, they've been good for, you know, a number of years, and they have a lot of athletes. Um, and so, you know, same with Central. So it'll be interesting to see how the rankings go. You know, this win only helps Garza stay either where they are or move up, like you said. You, know, you have a potential uh, you have a potential to get bumped down from Clovis North. And, and as well as Liberty, like you said, you know, that BHS Liberty game is going to have massive implications. You know, Liberty could potentially get bumped out with a loss to BHS. Oh, yeah. Um, but I think if they win out, um, you know, their last two games of the season, I think they'll stay in that Division One rankings. And, you know, and same with Garces. And it's just, you know, only time will tell. I think it'll be beneficial for Garces if they do get moved up and they don't have to play a Buchanan or a Central the first game. They could potentially get – San Joaquin Memorial, right, a rematch from the from the preseason, and um, you know, and, and hopes of you know hopes of potentially uh, changing up their their game plan to, to 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 put you know to put points on the board and, and stop um, you know San Joaquin Memorial's high powered offense. I do know that San Joaquin Memorial's quarterback got hurt, their starting quarterback, so that gives Garces an advantage as well. And so you know, I think only time will tell. Um, where where everything kind of falls into place. But like I said, you know, I think it'd be the most beneficial thing for Garst is that they don't see Buchanan, which is a quality football team in that first round of the playoffs. Yeah, nobody wants to see Buchanan. They have a great program up there in Fresno. Interestingly enough, the number nine team, which is the number one team in Division Two currently, Hanford is up 29-0 over Lemoore. And they're... Uh, they're in the third quarter over there at over there up north. So Hanford could potentially pull into Division One here if, if, if some uh, minor miracles happen. But like I said, Garz is the last team, number eight seed in Division One. Looks like they're going to stay put in Division One if they can hold on to this 41 point lead. Also, looking at a running clock here, Ty, it's. Uh, 35, more than a 35-point lead into the second half is usually a running clock unless the coaches have agreed differently. Yeah, and if Stockdale doesn't change, they did not make good adjustments at halftime. They're going to really want this running clock going through the second half here. Yeah, it looks like that's exactly what's going to happen as the clock is running now. So Trevor Horn gave me his D1 quarterfinal predictions here for November 12th, and again, a lot could change here because Liberty losing to... Bakersfield High School at the time. He has Buchanan playing against Hanford. He's got number two Central playing against Bullard. He's got San Joaquin Memorial in that rematch against Garces like you talked about, and he's got Clovis against Liberty, but those are just predictions. It can all change. Oh, yeah. It could change at a moment's notice. Oh, yeah. That's why you play the game on Friday night. Here's Gallegos. Going to take it himself. Far side now cuts back, and he gets swallowed up after a lot of running, but only a gain of about two yards. Yeah, it looks like they're coming back with the same concepts from uh, their previous successful drive uh, with the fly sweep, but it looks like they uh, they are attempting to throw out of it now. Um, so it looks like it um, be interesting to see if they're going to get the quarterback going with some, with some throws here in the second half. Two-yard gain there for Gallegos, second and eight. 
as Gallego sends quads out to the right side and now he brings his wide receiver Hereford to the other side and it looks like a lot of movement going on there on the offensive line that's going to be a false start penalty by Stockdale moving back five more yards yeah just another mistake you know they made quite a few tonight drop passes you know not as many penalties uh, on the Stockdale side as more of execution mistakes um, with the drop passes and uh, you know the missed blocks but you know overall there has been many penalties tonight on both sides of the ball Relatively clean game here at Garces. Second and 13 now for the Mustangs. Trips to the right. Wide receiver up top. Gallegos in the backfield by himself. Throws to the far side, and it's caught. That's number 14. Oh, correction, that's number 15. We don't have a 15 on Stockdale's roster. How about that? So the unknown player out there, number 15, gets a good reception. Gain of about... Eight yards on the play, going to make it a much more manageable third and four for the Mustangs. Yeah, it's probably going to bring up another passing situation for Stockdale here. It looks like, um, I wonder if they'll try and get the ball out fast. You know, Garces is playing soft coverage. Looks like they're bringing pressure again here. No, they go with the quarterback run. And it was a high snap, so Gallegos had to jump for the ball to get it, which already messed up the timing, and Garces swallowed him up. Number 72, Jackson Bowser was in there leading the rush. And, boy, that's a BC name if I've ever heard one. Oh, yeah, Coach Bowser. Longtime renegade, great coach. National championship winner, 1988. My dad was on staff with Coach Bowser for many, many years. And then Dallas Grider, then Jeff Chudy, and now our Todd Littlejohn at the helm of the BC Renegades, just a few miles away from here. Punting situation and a... Pretty decent punt again. Hitting a lot of good wood on that ball. And it's taken by the Rams and in a fumble. It's a fumble, and that is not going to please anybody that has anything to do with the special teams unit for Garces as the Mustangs look like to re look like they recovered the fumble. That's the last thing Garces wanted here. You know, you, you come out of half, you stop the Stockdale offense. You get the ball back. You got a really good chance just to drive down the field and put this game away. And you fumble the snap on the punt return, and now it gives Stockdale a little bit of life, even though they're down big. But you never want to let a team get back in the game at any point in time. Well, I believe it was number six, Cage Williams, who watched the ball bounce in front of him. He had two Stockdale Mustangs bearing down on him. And he still decided to try to pick it up and make a play. Fumbled the ball, and now Stockdale's got it at the 31-yard line. Running play on the sweep quarterback keeper, and he's going to be taken down. It's Gallegos after about a gain of one. Boy, when, when they stretch the play laterally like that, Ty, there's a lot of running involved, especially when you go to the field, and there wasn't a gain of very much. Yeah, I mean, Garces is doing a good job. You know, the Stockdale... They're not doing a very good job of reaching and securing blocks on the perimeter to get that quarterback free, and the receivers aren't blocking downfield. And so you have Garces defenders just slipping through uh, the initial blocks front side, and they get that quarterback down. And like you said, it's a lot of running for the quarterback. Um, you know, it could tire them out here pretty quick in the second half. Gallegos looks right side, throws, and the ball is underthrown on the way to Hereford, who is – Pretty well covered out there by Nathaniel Wallace. They had trips to the right, and all three receivers were covered very well by the Garces DBs. It's going to bring up a third and nine here from the 30-yard line. Want to thank our sponsors again for making this possible here on Garces Memorial Sports Network. Johnston's Sean McNally. Hey, Sean. Luigi's Tom Ming, Berry Family Dentistry, Belden Blaine Radis, Jasmine Vineyards, Borba, who reminds you to drink milk. Houses by Hall, CA Recruits, Chris Hamilton, SCOI, and more after this play. Trips again to the right for Gallegos. Gallegos drops back, and it looks to be a screen pass again. There's no blockers in front, though, but still the play was made by Adrian Pena out on the far side as he picked up about six yards. Placer Title Company, another sponsor for us, SCOI, Boyd's Pool Service, Sangara Mercedes, the law offices of H.A. Sala, and our title sponsor, Pav Solar. Pavel Titch, another BC name. They used to call the games up at Bakersfield College. 
Yeah, I remember when I was a player, he was, uh, Mr. Palvatich was a radio man. And he'd walk down the sideline and he'd talk on the radio and it was, uh, those are good times. Fourth down now, another attempted fourth down conversion. They get it. A great pass out there. Good timing out there. Gallegos finds his man, number 15. I'm going to text my punter, Dwayne Hartman, and I'm going to ask him to get me a number or a name for that number out there because he's watching his little brother, Daniel Hartman, who is a junior wide receiver for the Mustangs. Let's see if he can get me a name of this number 15 because we don't have 15 on the roster. Garces is playing soft coverage here to the boundary. Um, they have all night, and that's really been the only success Stockdale's had is throwing the ball. They get quick passes out uh, to the wide receiver on the perimeter, and let's see if they continue to do that. Man in motion is Leon Smith. He'll get the ball. Smith cuts back, and he gets pounded at the inside the 10-yard line. Very shifty Leon Smith, able to make a play, able to get through the center of the Garces defense, and he picks up about eight yards, a big gain there on first down. And remember, Garces is now at 12, 12 or 13. I got to go back and do my math, but they haven't allowed an offensive touchdown in a while. Stockdale has not been closer tonight. They're at the nine-yard line. Gallego sends Smith in motion again, hands off to Smith again. He's got blockers out front. Smith gets about two or three yards. It's going to be close to the first down marker, and he may have gotten it looking at the far side line judge. They're going to say third down. It's going to be third and very short. And now the, refer the head referee is going to say first down. So there you go. A little bit of miscommunication on the far sidelines. They'll drop the sticks. It'll be first and goal inside the 10-yard line. Looks to be at about the 8-yard line. Yeah, I wonder what Stockdale's going to come up with here. They'll probably continue to run the same thing, work the fly sweep, maybe bring the quarterback into it, get to the perimeter. Smith, handoff again, same play. Big time play by the Garces defense, and the ball is fumbled. Can you believe that? Garces gets the turnover. They force a fumble as Stockdale had not been closer to a touchdown than they were right there, and the ball was recovered by the Rams. It'll be first down for Garces. Yeah, that's a big mistake by Smith there. You know, you got a chance, Stockdale, you're, you're in scoring, striking distance. You got a chance to put the ball in and potentially give yourself a little bit of confidence and put yourself in a position to get some momentum. And then, um, you know, obviously you got the fumble. Now Garf has the ball back and they got a long drive down the field. And you see Smith just taking his helmet off in disgust and running all the way down the sidelines to about the 35 of the other side of the field. Obviously upset that he lost the ball there and cost his team a scoring opportunity, an Garces. opportunity to put points on the board. I was going to say here, Garces has too many players on the field. That will be an illegal substitution penalty, but it looks like, well, Garces is trying to call a timeout, but it's too late for that. The referee had already ruled that a penalty had occurred. Wonder if they're still going to let him have the timeout. Negative, no timeout. They're going to run the clock. So it's going to be a five-yard illegal substitution penalty. You cannot break the huddle with more than 11 players, and Garces did on that point, as Coach Thompson pointed out. They run it up the middle, and who is that big boy with the ball? Looks like they got a lineman in the backfield here. Is it his uh, senior night present? Yeah. <laughs> Giving him a little present here. You know those big boys, they, they get so used to blocking. It's, it's good to give him the ball every now and then. It's probably the first time he's ever touched the ball in his career. <laughs> and he's coming off the field like he just won the Super Bowl. That's 58, Miguel Montano. He's a sophomore, 5'10", 207. I, it looks like he's a little bigger than 207. Is There's a drone going across the field now, and that's the cause for the delay at this point. Head referee's not going to be too happy about that. I mean, what, we see that on Sundays, right? They've got the sky cam. Like, isn't it's the same thing, right? Yeah, I don't I don't know if these players are used to having a drone flying over the top of them. It could be a major distraction for them. You know, it could potentially be Stockdale looking to get a leg up on some film here. <laughs> Try and put themselves in a better position here. The wave of the future. Oh, there's another one behind us. Actually, no, that's a plane about to land at Meadows. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> I think one thing you can do is just take a football and throw it up there and knock it out of the sky. I would, Let me warm up my leg, Ty, get some punts in right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll let you do that. I wouldn't be able to throw a football that high. 
Well, it is now hovering above the 10-yard line, and the referees are none too pleased. They're walking over here to the press box. So that's why we have a delay here at Garces High School. It's 44-3. to The Rams on top of the Mustangs, 140 left to go here in the third quarter. It is a running clock, but the clock has stopped for now as the referee has walked all the way over to the press box, and he's going to shout something at our PA announcer. He's going to make an announcement. I am Matt Alvarez. I'm joined by Ty Thompson. Got Diana and Christian running things for us right next to us. Thank them for all the work that they've done this season. Ty, this is your first time uh, calling a game, man, doing doing your color analysis. How do you like it so far? Oh, it's interesting. You, you told know. me it was tough. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's tougher than it looks, right? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I'm so used to, to either being on the sideline or being up on the box looking at one specific thing. You know, obviously, I'm a defensive guy, so you're solely looking at what the offense is doing. But it's interesting to kind of evaluate the, the defense uh, and, and how they attack the offense from a different perspective. Uh, you know, but it's, it's, it's good to be a part of it. It's good to be a part of, uh, you know, local sports, local high schools to get out here and just see players and – and, uh, you know, and obviously give my support and, and uh, you know, just obviously new, new life experiences, huh? Absolutely. I love doing this, been doing this for a while. I've been very lucky to have great broadcast partners like Vance Palm, like Trevor, like Zach Ewing back in the day. You know, Vance actually got me started with this. You know, Vance calling our games now at Bakersfield College, doing a great job up there. And uh, this is, you know, heck, we get paid to talk about football, nothing better. Gars is going to keep the ball on the ground here, keep the clock running. Well, the clock's going to run regardless because if you have a 35-point lead, at least a 35-point lead in high school football and you enter the second half, then the clock will run. So Gars just picks up a few yards there. It'll be third and five now for the Rams deep in their own territory. And it was Montano again. He's loving life right now, I bet. Yeah, you're going to look to Gars this year to just try and pound the rock you know, and continue to get first. Obviously, we have a third down situation, but they'll continue to run the ball. Uh-oh. There's Keegan McCarthy, the new quarterback in for the Rams. He's going to scramble, and he's going to pick up the first down. Keegan McCarthy, the sophomore quarterback, 6'2", 185, maybe the heir apparent next year for the Rams. Yeah, so you had a uh, – he opened up to his left. The running back went right. I guess that's what happens when you put an offensive lineman in the backfield to run the ball. <laughs> he goes the wrong way, and the quarterback <laughs> goes, oh, I guess I'll just take it myself. Uh, definitely, I would not consider that a design play, but nonetheless, it did what it was intended to do. They got the first down, and the drive stays alive. McCarthy gets the snap, hands off. Montano, right side, and he tries to break away from a tackle with an alligator roll, gets about two or three yards. That is going to do it here. Running clock for the third quarter. We are done through three quarters of play. Garces up 44-3 here on the Garces Memorial Sportsnet. We'll be back for the start of the fourth. Welcome back to Sam Tobias Field here at Garcis Memorial High School. Clock will start running here on the fourth quarter. Second and nine, McCarthy's going to pitch out on the near side to Cage Williams. Williams cuts back to the left side, and Williams has some daylight. Goes back to the right again, stays on his feet. A flag is down. Williams loses ground. He cuts back again to the near side, and he's finally out of bounds at around the 45-yard line of Stockdale. But there is a flag on the 46-yard line over on the far hash. This one is probably coming back. 
Yeah, it's just a simple speed option play. You have the quarterback running the ball with the running back out to his right. And if the quarterback senses pressure, then he has the option to pitch it to the running back. And the running back cuts back across midfield and basically bounces back and forth between each ass. And usually when you have a player cut across the field, you have a higher chance for holding calls, blocking the backs, you know, and in calls of that such. Sure. Still going to result in a first down because the block in the back came so far down the field that the amount of yardage that is negated from that was more than the yardage required for the first. So it'll be a first down for Garces from the 36-yard line, their own 36-yard line. Williams again stuffed at the line, a big hit by Aaron Charles. And you hear a boisterous Stockdale crowd after that big hit by the senior linebacker, number five. That was a great feel by Charles there. He just came right, running back went right through the gap and he came up and stuck him with his near near foot, near shoulder and had a great wrap and run and got him down. Form for tackle. Gain. Form tackle, you don't see a lot of that anymore, do you? No, it's tough, you know, the, the game has changed so much. There's a huge emphasis on keeping your head out of tackles, which usually results in, you know, less surface area when you, once you make contact with just the shoulder and um, you see a lot of running backs and receivers slip more tackles because of that. Um, but you know, you always aim to protect the players at all costs and put them in situations where they won't get hurt. So you try and coach that up 24 seven. Third down here for Garces, a flag on the play as Stockdale made the stop. Big play by number 77, Ronald Wright, the junior defensive lineman, but we have a penalty if I were Coach Shelton, I would accept the penalty and move Garces back even further as opposed to giving them the opportunity to run a short fourth down play. We'll see what the penalty is. It's going to be a chop block. Chop block on Garces. So that's a 15-yard penalty. Not a lot of people know that. You know, when I was a kid, I used to study the referee signals. And so, like, I knew all of the signals. I knew all every single penalty, what they were. And I'm, I think we might have stumped the announcer here at the uh, at Sam Tobias <laughs> Field because he hasn't announced it yet. Yeah. Yeah, and, and unlike college and, uh, you know, at the professional level, you cannot block below the waist at the high school level. Um, you know, and you see a lot in college. You see a lot of uh, you see a lot of, of chop blocks. Blocking below, below the waist, especially downfield, is a very effective way to get a defender on the ground. But again, it's not a legal block at the high school level. Now, a chop block and a high-low. I don't know the difference between the two. So it's a chop block is you're going to see a one-on-one -on -one matchup, you know, a blocker and a defender, and the blocker goes below the waist, um, you know, and takes the player down. Now, a high-low, which is illegal at all levels, is when a player is engaged with another player and then another opposing blocker comes in and executes a chop block. Okay. You know, it's a pretty dangerous uh, It's a pretty dangerous block, and it is a common occurrence, especially at the college level. You know, you see with a lot of inside zone teams now, you'll see a scoop block or when teams run, you know, a perimeter play, an outside zone play, you'll see um, – you know, like for example, you'll see a guard engage with a defensive tackle, and then the and then the tackle on the right side of the guard will come down and chop him as the guard works up to to the backside backer, um, li inside linebacker. You know, and so you s actually do see that a lot um, at the college level, and so you, it is pretty dangerous because you have a potential knee injuries um, for players to get knee injuries. Oh you know, because yeah. they're they're solely locked up. On, a, on, a, on an opposing blocker, and then you just have a guy come out of nowhere and chop his legs down, and so, yeah. Um, so the refs do a good job on calling those, um, you know, and so you want to try and keep, you want to try and keep those guys safe and keep those one-on-one -on -one matchups nice and healthy. Stockdale takes over after the shanked punt from the quarterback, Keegan McCarthy. And now Gallegos able to pick the ball up on his own, and he gets it about eight yards here to the near hash. Yeah, so it looks like Stockdale's running a, what, what we call a power read. So they're working the fly sweep action. The quarterback puts the ball 
in the receiver's stomach and he holds it and rides it and reads the inside backer. If the inside backer works over the top to the fly sweep, the quarterback will pull it and run right behind him up the middle. Um, it's a pretty common play, pretty successful play. Um, it's something you definitely have to practice and scheme to stop. Oh, successful that time for sure as he was able to pick up seven yards. Jordan Gallegos, the junior quarterback. He sticks around. He's going to have plenty of experience here. Now he drops back to pass after the play action, throws the ball up in the air, and everybody hits the deck. That looked like an earthquake hit, and everybody just kind of fell at the same time. That was really awkward. Yeah, it might have been a miscommunication between the play calling or the quarterback. You know, you had two Stockdale receivers in the same area on a vertical route, and that's really a no-no because as you put two receivers in the same area, you also bring two defenders, two to possibly three defenders in the same area, and you just increase your chances of, of potentially getting picks and things like that. And then right there you see those guys, they just fall over. They all trip on each other. It turns into a kind of a wash. Remember that scene on The Waterboy when they're doing the highlight reel of Bobby Boucher and he takes out the entire sideline and like eight people fall at the same time? It <laughs> yeah. kind of looked like that. Yeah, he was a uh, – Bobby Boucher was a different level talent. Third and three here as Gallego's going to keep it himself and a penalty flag, an obvious holding call right in front of us, right in front of the referee as Gallego's is run. His scamper is going to be all for naught. That's going to be ten yards back. Yeah, went back to the power read play there, but the Garces did a good job on um, the trapper, the guard that pulls around the defensive end, um, you know, dented him on the line and forced him back, which really cut off that backside gap and forced the quarterback to go wide and allows the Garces defenders to uh, pursue and get him in the backfield. But the holding call doesn't help at all either. We're down to four and a half minutes left here. The running clock means that as soon as the clock started here in the third quarter, you got 12 minutes to play. Or in the fourth quarter, you got 12 minutes to play of real time. So we're down to 4-19. Garces up 44-3. I'm Matt Alvarez. The gentleman next to me is Coach Tyler Thompson, defensive coordinator at Panorama U, Harvard on the Hill. What other, what other nicknames have we had for it over the years? Oh, I don't know. The, the Bakersfield College. Yeah. BC at home tomorrow night against Long Beach. That has always been a fun game over the last few. We played them, what, we played them twice in two bowl games back-to-back -back over there, and then the last time we played them, or a couple times ago, we played them when my kicker, Diego, hit five field goals. Yeah. yeah. What was that, 2018? 2018, yeah. Yeah, it's always, a, it's always a good contest against Long Beach, you know, a longstanding uh, program. You know, similar to us, you know, they, they always have good athletes. You know, then they get their, you know, offensively, they, they have a good quarterback. They run around, they get the ball to their athletes in space, and so it'll be a good matchup. It's tomorrow night, 6 o'clock at Memorial Stadium. If you're not doing anything, head over to the stadium. Get some tailgate, get some, uh, watch some good college football, and soak in a beautiful evening or what we're, what will sh be sure to be a beautiful evening at Memorial Stadium as Stockdale turns the ball over on downs again. Clock's going to continue to run. We're under three minutes here. 44-3, to Garces up. Again, want to thank Diana and Christian to my right running the program as they always do. They're going to be running the program tomorrow too. I'm always on the field. I never, I've never, I just haven't looked up to the press box. They're always in the press box doing the BC games too. <laughs> I was just made note of that tonight. Diana told me that she also runs the BC game. They are hardworking folks, and we appreciate everything they do. Here's McCarthy on the option. Now decides to reverse field, and he breaks a tackle momentarily. He just steps out of bounds there after a big loss. And Montano over there, the uh, running back for the last quarter or so over there, uh, kind of waiting, waiting for his pitch, never came. Yeah, Stockdale did a good job. They ran low to option, um, so it's it's really speed option with a with a lead blocker, and um, Stockdale did a great job forcing the quarterback to reverse field, which really is never going to result in a good play as the Stockdale defense pursues from the backside and forces a loss of downs. Montano wanted the ball that time, and another big stop there by Ronald Wright. 
junior defensive lineman. He's getting some good experience here, right? Hopefully coming back for his senior season at Stockdale, and he'll uh, he'll have some good playing time under his belt. Made some big plays here in the fourth quarter. We're at a minute 25 left to go here in the ball game. Going to be third and 16 for Garces. Coach Cody Stone down there shouting the directions to Keegan McCarthy, the sophomore quarterback. He's, again, they, they go from having Travis Pluggy, 6'5", 205. They've got a 6'2 quarterback in McCarthy. they got some big gunslingers there at Garces. Well, yeah, and they had, uh, you know, they had uh, Joseph Campbell up at Garces last year who was a quality player, um, and I, I believe he's now up at Fresno State, and then Pluggy this year, and then, uh, you know, this guy, this might be the guy for the future for the Rams. So it's good to get him some game experience like you mentioned earlier, Coach. As Garces turns the ball over here on the option pitch that was fumbled, we are down to 30 seconds left. Stockdale may or may not get one or two plays off. Want to thank you for joining us tonight. It's been a fun broadcast. This game was never in doubt for the Garces Rams. Stockdale came down early, put three points on the board. It has been 44 unanswered. And that ball is knocked out of the air. Great defensive play down there by number 23, Nathaniel Wallace. That is going to do it. Time has expired here at Garces. They move to 6-3 and three on the season. The Mustangs fall to 4-5. and five. That will do it here from Sam Tobias Field. We thank you for joining us tonight on the Garces Memorial Sports Net. We will catch you next time. I am Matt Alvarez. That is Ty Thompson. Thank you again to Diana, Diana and Christian and all of our sponsors tonight. Final score, Garces 44, Mustangs 3. Have a good night.